What I'm going to go through in this video is how to use a Palin test photometer to test for free chlorine, total chlorine and the pH value. So to start off with, what you need to do is rinse your test tubes out. Now I have already rinsed these out, but um, I'll do it again anyway, um, because it's important to get rid of any residue there may be in the test tubes from previous pull tests that might interfere with the result that you get. So once you've rinsed them out, take one of your test tubes and top it up to the 10 mil mark with just a, a blank, uh, just a sample of water. You're not going to add any reagent to that. You're just going to use that as a blank. Uh, and I'll explain what that means in a second. And what you need to make sure you're doing on these pull tests is keeping everything clean and keeping it dry as well. Don't allow your photometer itself to get any build up of water or you know grime in there over time. Keep it clean and tidy. Um, and keep your, as I say, keep your, your test tubes, they need to be clean and dry as well because what the way that these photometers work is this shines a sample. Uh, this shines light through the sample, and uh, if it's got dirt or grime or, or, or moisture on the outside of the test tube, it's going to interfere with the result. So when you're testing for free chlorine, what you want to do is actually, if you look at that amount of water, that's how much you want to start off with for free chlorine, and you're going to be using a DPD-1 tablet for chlorine, for free chlorine. And it's important with these, with these tablets to make sure if you see there, it says photometer, don't use comparator DPD tablets for uh, photometers and vice versa. Make sure you're using the correct, the correct tablet. So a DPD-1, what you do, a little bit of water, tablet goes in without touching the tablet with your fingers. You don't want to touch the tablet with your fingers or else you're going to affect the result. And what you do is you'll see it go, go pink. That tells us that there's chlorine in there. There's definitely chlorine in there or else it wouldn't go pink. So the next stage is to Add a bit more water and keep your eye on the colour that it goes. Can you see that it's staying pink? Now that means if it what you might find sometimes is that it bleaches out. If you see that it started off pink, but then as you added it up to 10 mil, it bleached out and went and went clear. That basically means that there's way too much chlorine in the pool and it's literally bleaching the colour out of the DPD-1 tablet. Now what you want to make sure you do is not to add the tablet directly to 10 mil because if it is that super chlorinated it won't go pink at all, it will instantly bleach out. And what that actually looks like is that there is no chlorine in the pool because that's exactly what happens when there's no chlorine in the pool, it just doesn't send the DPD tablet pink. And what you might then think is that there's no chlorine in the pool, you go around the plant room and you put more chlorine in the pool, but there actually might be too much chlorine in the pool and it's just bleaching out the DPD-1 tablet. But if it goes pink with a, a few drops of water in and then you observe it bleaching out the sample, that's telling you that there is chlorine in there and it's bleaching out the tablet. Now what you want to do with these DPD-1, with well, both DPD tablets that you're going to be using. We're going to be using DPD-3 in a second to test for total chlorine, but you do need to crush them up using the uh, plastic crushing rod. 
be careful because these test tubes are made of glass so don't go sort of stabbing at the bottom of the uh, of the test tube or else you'll end up breaking it now what you want to make sure is that you've completely dissolved the tablet and that there's no there's no uh, fragments of tablet left and another thing that's worth pointing out is that in the test tube the surface of the water forms what's called a meniscus there's a slight curvature to the water you're probably not able to see it on on the um, camera because it the camera itself is at a slight angle but what you want is for the bottom of the meniscus to be exactly level with the 10 mil marker on the uh, on the test tube um, so once you're ready so you've got your sample and you've got you've got your your blank what you do is you put the blank in first because with these photometers they need to be zeroed now what you've got on the test tube is a, a diamond shape that needs to line up with the triangle on the if you can see that there's a I don't know if you can see it or not but there's a triangle on the front of the um, of the uh, the circular um, part that you put the test tube in they need to line up so put it in turn the unit on as the on button and it will default to chlorine make sure that the uh, the test tube is all the way in because the lid is designed to shroud out any ambient light it'll come on at chlorine cl2 is the symbol for chlorine the five denotes that this particular photometer is able to measure up to five parts per million if there's a greater amount of chlorine than that it'll come up with a greater than five um, symbol but once you've got the blank in you press the button on the uh, left hand side now again I don't know if you can see but the buttons are slightly different that one's a test tube with blank and the other one is a test tube that is shaded in so because we're doing a blank we want to make sure we're pressing the right button it comes up as zero swap the blank for the actual sample that you're going to be testing and then don't press the blank again press the test button this time and then it comes up with 2.28 milligrams per liter of free chlorine so i'm just going to make a note of that 2.28 okay so that's the free chlorine test done what we want to do now is a test for total chlorine so what you do is to the same sample that you added the dpd1 tablet to add a dpd3 tablet to to it and then crush it up again in the same way as you did with the dpd1 but what you'll find is that the DPD3 usually takes a little bit more sort of effort to crush it up. Again, make sure that you've completely dissolved the tablet and then leave it for two minutes. It's a two minute reaction time for the uh, DPD3. And while you're waiting for that two minutes to uh, expire, what I'm going to do is show you how to test for the pH. So what you want with the pH is another 10 mil sample. You're not worried about the bleaching out thing with the pH. Make sure it's at eye level when you're checking that the meniscus is at the bottom, uh, that the bottom of the meniscus is level with the 10 the 10 mil marker and what you want here is fennel fennel red tablet again a fennel red tablet for a photometer not a fennel red tablet for a comparator pop that in there without touching the tablet with your fingers and do uh, crush it up in the usual way and again what you want to do is make sure 
that the tablet fully fully dissolves. And just before I take the uh, the pH, again, make sure everything's clean, make sure everything's dry. And that goes for all of the tests that you do with the, uh, the photometer. Everything's got to be clean, everything's got to be dry. Let's, let's find out what the, the total chlorine is. So the free chlorine was 2.28. Um, it's been, it's coming up to two minutes now. We've prepared our sample with a DPD3. Let's find out what the, what the total chlorine is. Because this unit has stayed on, we don't need to blank it again. We just simply press the button and we've got 2.40. So 2.40 was the total, 2.28 was the free. So of that 2.40 total chlorine, we know that 2.28 milligrams per liter is in the form of free chlorine. So that tells us that we've got a combined chlorine level of zero point uh, what is it one two because basically that's the difference between the total chlorine and the free chlorine so you basically take the free chlorine amount value away from the total chlorine which leaves you with the amount of combined chlorine there's no actual tablet test for combined chlorine what you do is you test for free then you test for total and then you take the free value away from the total value and that tells you what level you've got in 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 terms of combined chlorine let's have a look at ph what you need to do with this one is get it off of chlorine and onto ph and it's still got the blank in its memory. So put the uh, sample with the pH tablet in and press the button on the right hand side. And that tells us that our pH value is 7.66. So that's free chlorine, total chlorine. We worked out combined chlorine based off those two and then pH. What I will mention is if you do get a situation where either that the, the, there's so much chlorine that it's bleaching out the, the sample, or even if there's just an elev a level of chlorine higher than five, this photometer and most photometers don't measure, aren't able to come back with an accurate reading. It will just say greater than five or if it's bleached out, it will say zero. What you need to do in those situations is first of all, do another test because you might have a dud tablet or something like that. So always make that um, your common practice that if you, get, if you get a result that is a bit unusual, always do another test just to make sure um, that what you're getting is, is, is representative of the, the state of the water. So let's say you've got an elevated level of chlorine and it's bleaching out. What you want to do is take five mil out of the original sample. So that's where one of these comes in useful and replace it with five mil of deionized water, which you can get from a petrol station. So take five mil out of there, replace it with five mil of deionized water because this does not contain any chlorine. The problem with tap water is that it will contain a little bit of chlorine itself. Uh, so it's not a true dilution. So you're basically diluting this down by half. Um, what you should be able to do then is get a reading with the photometer. But what you'll need to remember to do is double up the reading. So if, for example, once you've diluted with, 10, uh, with five mil of deionized water, and, and you're doing a test with the photometer and it's telling you it's four parts per million, remember that it's really eight parts per million because you've only got half of the original sample in the test tube.